Hey everyone, this is Roberto Blake, and today in my YouTube series on how you become a web designer, I'm going to actually talk a little bit about Adobe Muse and its place in the web design industry. Now, many coding purists have really come out against Adobe Muse, and I understand the reasoning behind that. You guys have to remember, I started hand coding at 13, 14 years old using Microsoft Notepad. So I am at heart a coder, but you have to remember before that, I was an illustrator, I was doing comic books, um, I come from a family of photographers and visual artists, so I actually only got into web design so that I could do web comics to begin with, and it just kind of took off from there. So I still bring that perspective to my opinions on web design and the value of visual aesthetic. You also have to remember that the majority of people in audience who are online to either get information or to buy something or to choose a product and service are going to be regular day-to-day -day people and that means that from a marketing perspective they're going to value how something looks and presents before they worry about how it works. Coding purists rightfully have a emphasis on functionality, clean semantic standards based code, however those are not the priorities of consumers. So Adobe Muse is a product that's geared toward creating simple websites that consumers can use and it's also geared toward the learning curve of the average person rather than a more technically oriented person or a person that might have some visual design experience or at least can grasp that because learning visual design skills um, in terms of a, a range of difficulty is a little less steep than learning technical skills and all of the um, fundamental things that go with that. There's a lot that's theoretical and scientifically based knowledge that goes into coding and understanding functionality. There's just a really a lot to it and that's why people who have um, computer science degrees are paid um, very well and are very much valued. However, the average person does not need any of that knowledge to at least do a basic website if they use a tool like Adobe Muse. They can focus on the information they need to communicate and the visual presentation style that they want. They can focus on layout and typography, things that appeal aesthetically to everyday consumers and users, use basic functionality, things that work, and understand direct user interaction in terms of I click on this thing, I get what I want. So Adobe Muse was not um, designed to get the approval of coders, it was designed to get the approval of people who um, in the print industry want to expand their capabilities, become full service agencies, and offer their clients uh, web design so they can absorb all of that work with a low overhead and say, hey, I can do not only this print work for you that I've already been doing, and maybe I've already been doing motion graphics work for you, I can do the whole package. I can do video, print, and web. It gives someone who's a visually based, aesthetic based um, designer the ability to offer interactive web media for their client base and um, you know, get that extra revenue stream. It allows print designers and art directors. Art directors a lot of times are frustrated working with coders. And the reason that art directors and creative directors who aren't themselves coders are frustrated with coders is you have to remember these people come from the print world or the video production side which means that they only believe in things that they can see until you render code and upload your files to a website and everything like that coding is very abstract and it's very theoretical and it's a, you know it's based in code and it's based in numbers and these are things that visually creative and artistic people don't understand so they can't equate them with a result when you're dealing with someone who wants a mock-up in their hand who um, is picking color palettes and swatches who is you know producing um, video graphics and dealing with photographers they only understand tangible visual results so when they have to deal with a coder and they have to deal with time constraints and they have to deal with is this ready is this done and can I see it and what does it look like they can be very frustrated because coders don't present their work that way they don't have those same considerations and priorities and that's not you know meant to be in any way derogatory or disrespectful it's just saying that there's a different set of um, you know um, philosophical values in the workflow and process that don't mix well together at all and the thing is an art director or creative director will be overseeing a department that may handle print video and web and so if two of three of their departments are presenting and giving them something in a way that you know meets their needs and that they understand and that they can immediately make decisions on 
in real time, not having that in the third department is always going to chafe for them. So that's why Adobe made um, Adobe Muse, because with Adobe Muse, you can make very um, concise decisions very quickly because you see everything in real time. It literally is just um, a web designer's version of Adobe InDesign, the primary tool of the print design industry, aside from Quark Express, obviously, or Corel Draw for those of you who like that particular application. But let's be honest, Adobe InDesign is the primary lead print design application in the print design world today. Um, and I talk a little bit about that in my um, series on print design and how to become a print designer. But going back to the website with Adobe Muse, Adobe Muse breaks it down into things that people who aren't coders can understand. The planning and structure of the website, the ability to go ahead and equivalently set up what we call a site map on the other side, but to do that visually and see the relationship between individual pages and how they work. The ability to use master pages to set up templates for headers and footers to be consistent or navigation to be consistent throughout a site, copyright information at the bottom, whatever you want to do. Um, the ability to then go into individual pages and place in their content, design, drop assets, link assets, um, change the position of images in just a click instead of having to go and rewrite code. Oh, uh, you know what? Instead of changing um, the copy from left to right and having it on the left side of the screen, you know what? I want the copy to all be on the right side of the screen. I want the image menus to be over on the left side of the screen in code that could take a few minutes depending on the complexity of it. If there's JavaScript involved, it may take hours um, depending on how complicated it is or what's involved. In Adobe Muse, this would take seconds. If you don't like a color, you can go ahead and you can click through on a color selector just like you would in, um, in Photoshop and you can just decide to change the color and run through it right there in real time and make a decision and you can have your you know, creative director, art director, your client make decisions instantaneously and see the result of that decision in a second and approve it, rather than having to go back, change code, re-upload it, wait for them to be able to check on it online, whatever, or wait for it to upload, etc. A lot of times there's also browser issues with coding where you have to do different things or take shortcuts to make it consistent throughout all browsers. Adobe Muse, for the most part, does not have that problem. It's these aesthetic considerations why in the um, late 90s and the early 2000s that many web designers were using Flash. And I'll do a whole separate video on Flash and web design. But the reason that Flash was so popular um, with certain types of web designers, the type of web designers that work for ad agencies, work for magazines, etc., is because it appealed to the aesthetic values of the art directors who were in charge at those periods in time because those were those values. Those were people who weren't coders. Those were people who understand print and understand video and animation and motion. So they needed tools and they needed a presentation style that fit with their values and their understanding of the tools and their ability to make decisions and their ability to command and lead. Someone who as coders will no doubt appreciate, someone who's not a coder cannot run a coder effectively. Being that many of the Adobe Creative Suite products are utilized by the entertainment and advertising industry, the folks over at Adobe made these tools to overcome those kind of challenges and in, uh, challenges in working with those type of clients and meeting their expectations. That's where a lot of this comes from. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that and that's why they have the opinions and the feelings that they do about certain individual tools. In combination, using Adobe Muse, you can also use um, Adobe Edge Animate. And what that does is um, it works very similar to the way a lot of people who may have used to use uh, uh, Macromedia Fireworks, later Adobe Fireworks when they acquired it, or even um, the animation panels in Photoshop back in the day, or Image Ready for those of you who are really old school and remember that from like Photoshop 6.0 and 7.0, like me. Um, I think it was actually even in CS1, but I could be wrong about that. But, you know, anyway, it's um, a really great web animation program that isn't Flash. It actually does HTML and CSS based animation, which is really cool. And it works in tandem with Adobe Muse. So you can do all these interesting things. Like if you've ever seen um, websites where snow or leaves are falling down in the background and it's not Flash, you can do that kind of thing with Adobe Edge Animate. You can do animated fly-in titles, you know, just different things. 
and it's actually really cool. It's really interesting to use. I highly suggest that you check that out. And it is another advantage of using uh, Adobe Muse. You can make these beautiful um, aesthetic websites. You can keep them simple or you can actually build up on them visually and really add something to the user experience. And that's the really important thing when you're talking about web design. With a web design, the most important thing is um, not the functionality, believe it or not. The functionality is merely a means to an end, and that end is user experience. User experience is the single most important thing in web design, and I'll cover that in a completely different video that talks about that, and I could go on just about user experience, but I will leave you with this thought on the subject. If you've gone to a website and you've looked at it or used it and said, I can't be bothered and clicked off, it was a poorly designed website regardless of how well it functioned, regardless of how well the code was written, regardless of how much time was spent on it. It was just bad because the user experience was bad enough to where you couldn't be bothered to stay, you won't be coming back even if the website is capable of needing your, meeting your needs. It was a bad experience. And when a website has a good experience, you come back over and over again, you can't get enough of it, you stay there longer, and you're more likely to make a buying decision based on that experience. So when people talk about code and they talk about these different things, and yes, it's not like you don't need code and functionality and that you don't need to be concerned about things like internet security and web security with regard to a site that has username and password information, etc. You need all those things. But none of those things will even get a chance to matter if the user experience is so bad that people leave before they find out anything else. Adobe Muse is a tool that helps average everyday people create great user experiences in str simple, straightforward terms with a website. And for those of you who are still naysayers about Adobe Muse, Adobe Muse still allows you to put in metadata for SEO purposes, so that's not lost. And it still allows you to create form fields and do submission forms, et cetera. So all the basic things that um, an entry-level web designer could do with code can be accomplished with Adobe Muse without the need to learn complicated code and the ability to make simple changes in real time per client request. All right, well, that's it for this video. Um, if you guys have differing opinions about Adobe Muse or you have questions about Adobe Muse, leave those in the comments below. I'll have some links to some more information in the, the description there. Um, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Watch the other videos in this series, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.